Hey everybody, it's Lex from PDQ.com. I'm going to take you through setting up DFS, that's Distributed File Systems, on your server so that you can replicate files from one site to another and uh, then eventually de use Deploy to deploy those without sending them 100 times across your network. You just replicate it once and use the local copy. So, with that, a couple things you guys have to be, you know, if you haven't gotten your server's basic server set up, pause the video, get your basic server set up, and then uh, hit play again. So this point, your ser basic server set up, this is uh, server 2019, most up to date. couple things I want you to know. I've got site one, red background. I got site two, kind of a eh, blue background, so you can tell the difference between the machines we're working on. So let's get started. Site one, we're going to go up and we're going to do a server manager. And we are going to go add roles and features. Now, again, here's the uh, little uh, part of the reading that I never do about the wizard and the roles and blah, blah, blah. I just hit next. We are going to add a role based feature. Okay, and again, this is going to, I'm going to do this on each machine individually so that we can see how it's done on each individual machine. So this machine selected here. I give it a next, and then the feature that we're going to add is under File and Storage. Look under File and iSCSI, and we're going to add DFS name spaces. Yes, we are going to add these features, and then we're also going to add DFS replication. So check both of those again. That pop-up is going to come up for DFS tools. You need to take those. We give it a next. We give it a next again because it's just back to the features portion. And here's a summary of what we're adding again DFS namespaces and replication and the tools that go with that so I will hit install that is site one let's jump over to site two very similar only slightly different so it's the same but different yeah I don't know how that works out but <clears throat> again we're gonna go to the server manager again we are gonna add roles and features and not read we won't read that again next it is role or feature based we're going to run it on site two this time, as you see right there. Go to next. Again, we're going to go back to files and iSCSI services. And on this one, we just need to add the replication because site one is going to take care of the namespace. So this time I hit DFS replication. It still wants you to add the tools, add those features. So we can now we've got our roles, we've got our features. <clears throat> we give it a next. Oop, I nexted it twice, but next. Don't need anything off this screen. Hit next again. DFS replication, there's the tools. Once again, we give it an install. And off to the race as it goes. Now, <clears throat> great thing is this loads or installs fairly quick. So looks like um, <clears throat> site one is done. So close that. And we should be able to at this point on site one to go look up our DFS tools. There it is, DFS management desktop. We're gonna open that up. Namespace replication. This is brand new. There isn't anything there. So before I get too far, let's just make sure site two is done or nearing being done, which it should be here momentarily. Oh, check it out. It just finished. Awesome. Close, close. Good to have both these guys set up, especially for your first go around. It makes it a lot easier. So let's go add a new namespace. Personally, I like to right click. So new namespace. Now we need to pick our server again. Our namespace server is site one. You can browse for it, but since I know the name and I can actually spell site one, we're just going to select that. Now we need to pick a name for this namespace. So uh, <clears throat> we'll just call this, um, well, I don't know, let's just call it um, repo, or P-O. I like to do that in caps. Give it a next. <clears throat> At this point, it's either going to be a domain-based or a standalone namespace. Just to keep this simple, we're going to use the domain-based namespace because it allows Active Directory to help authentication, that kind of thing. So hit next on that. There's our namespace settings. You want to eyeball that, make sure you spelled repo right or whatever it is your namespace is going to be. And then you're going to create that namespace. Boom. Success. Well, that was pretty cool. It's like a first for me. Hit success right out the gate. Close. There's our namespace. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to do some replication. We need to build some folders to replicate. So let's do a new replication group. <clears throat> Again, this is going to be a multiple, multi-purpose replication group. 
It's just simple. I like using that. It's easy out the gate. Name of this replication group. Let's just call this PDQ um, repo. A little dash in it there. Okay. There's our domain, web.pdq.com. We give it a next. Now we need to add two or more servers to this. Again, we need your first two to get started. We're going to add site one. And then we will also add site two. Again, this is, you know, site one, site two, so we can replicate between the two of them. It's going to take a second to authenticate and verify that that can be part of the group. And as soon as it's done doing that, it will pop it in there and we will be able to move on. There it is, working, checking members. And should pop up very quickly here. The next thing, there it is. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we'll give it a next. Full mesh, okay, or a hub and wheel. Full mesh means if I update something on site one, it goes to site two. If I update something on site two, it replicates site one. So we'll go with that. Now band, bandwidth, continuously using bandwidth 24 hours a day. You can go in and do this schedule. You can actually change the schedule after the fact. But me, I just leave it right here, replicate all day long. And then we need to pick our primary member. And again, site one is the one we're working on. I want that to be the primary member of this because it does have the namespace and everything else. So give that a next. Now we need to add folders to replicate. So we're going to go add, we're going to browse for folders. And since I don't have a folder set up yet, I'm going to go build a new folder on the C drive. And we will also call this uh, repo, repository, repository. No, nope, we're going to call it repo easier. Give it an okay. And We'll give it an OK here. And then we are going to hit Next. Now, Site 2. We need to edit this one because we need to have a path because there's not one not set on Site 2. Personally, uh, we're going to enable this, and I like to keep the folder names the same because it just, you know, uh, cuts down on the uh, confusion. So, again, Repo. There we go. At this point, give that an OK. So those guys are going to replicate. We give it a Next. Very, very good idea. You know, I don't read a lot of things, but this is a good thing to read. PDQ repository. There's our web domain. It's site one and site two. This allows replication from site two to site one and from site one to site two. It's going to replicate continuously with full bandwidth. Okay. Primary members site one. A replicated folder is called repo on also site one and site two. Give that a create. Once again, success. Wow, I must be doing something right in life because yeah, that worked out quite easily. Okay, give that a close. It says replication will not begin until the configuration is picked up by members of the replication group. We'll give that an okay. I'm absolutely fine with that. Let's go take a look really, oh, before we do that, let's click on this repository, the, the replication group. What we need to do is go verify we've got right permission, the permission set on our folders. So that repo folder that we just selected, let's go and make sure that that is shared and the permissions are set on that. So repo is not shared. So let's verify that we can share this. We'll say it's read right by everyone at this point. Now, not the most secure thing. You're going to probably want to make sure that you make it um, just for your users, but for the sake of the video right now, we're just going to make sure that that's good to go. And then I'm going to verify the security on that. So everybody has read right to that one. Now we're going to do the same thing over on site two. We're going to go verify that that folder exists. Repo, right click, properties. Okay, not shared. Let's make sure we share this guy. We're going to add everybody. We're going to add everybody. And then we're going to give them read write permissions because everybody needs to be able to get in and out of this or at least your domain admins for your file or for your um, credentials for pdq deploy and inventory so we'll share that verify that shared done so now that those folders are shared let's just check our permissions here security permissions everyone read write we're good to go on that one also so at this point we're going to jump back over to the dfs and we're going to go verify our PDQ repo. We're going to 
go over here to replicated folders okay right click on this and now we need to share that folder so that uh, the namespace and everybody can get to that so share published folders using existing shared folders there we go we give it a next parent folder name so it's going to be the name or domain and the parent folder on this we'll just call this pdq dash pdq q dash repo just to keep it all the same full view of the namespace pdq repo repo there you go folder name Oop, parent folder namespace my bad guys back that up let's browse it's going to be much easier this is in our pdq.com repo our capital repo we need to select it if you knew it i could have typed it in but there we go now we're good to go so web repo repo wow it's a little redundant but it's gonna work or i guess i could change at this point we can call it uh files re repository files let's do that just so it's not redundant and then we hit share and at this point these are now shared the namespace is shared out there so let's go check replication to see if it's working so we're gonna on site one i'm gonna open that folder we're gonna make a new uh, text document we'll just call this test actually we'll call it site one so we know it came from site one txt and then we'll jump over onto site two we'll go after that folder on the c drive repo and there it is site one txt and then we're going to open this and edit it we'll say edit site two and then we'll file we'll save that and we'll jump back over here to site one and when we open site one text there it is it's been edited from site two so this has been it is replicating now something about replication guys that file was absolutely insignificantly small i mean it was nothing and then i put some characters in there if you are replicating bigger files okay chrome's not that big but like a windows cumulative update there's it's going to need some time to get from site one to site two so depending on how fast your WAN link is, you may want to get that replicated across the day before you push out your deployments, that kind of things. But again, something you're going to need to make sure that you um, time or check, you know, get that down before you start using those files at the, uh, the remote sites, calling them local. So, all right, there it is. Now, if I go and let's just... Uh, Call this by namespace which would be oops sorry i grabbed the wrong thing let's put that up there we'll grab that and we will go to oh we will go to i got too many things open here we go we'll just verify the namespace i'll open a new one of these and we're going to go to backslash backslash web.pdq.com backslash repo there you go there's that files folder that we called if i open that up you now see site1.txt and if again i get into this there it is so that's how you call it using the unc path through the namespace okay again that was our domain our replication group and where it's located so there it is guys that's setting up dfs and uh, windows 2019 forgive me for making things redundant but hopefully you get the idea of how to do it and uh we'll catch you guys all later hope that was enjoyable see you